when we see something happening that we don't like, we start meditating on it. We start telling ourselves, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. This could be with the narcissist. This could be with anything that you feel overwhelmed with. So something at work, this could be with bills or money. And today we're going to specifically do something with money and debt. And we tell ourselves over and over, I don't like it. And we start rehearsing. I don't like it. I don't like it. You're still putting out the energy of whatever that thing is, is happening. And that's the thing that you are constantly soaking up the energy for. So just for example, treatment of your children, let's say, to interfere with their development. You don't like the fact that you keep going back to court and that you keep having to fight the narcissist and your attorney bills, for example, are stacking up. These are just examples, right? There can be, think about any kind of thing that you don't like. But if that's the constant focus of what you are thinking about during the day, your non-conscious mind is absorbing all of that and it's putting out the energy related to the frequency of that thing. So if it's about hate, if it's about worry, if it's about anxiety, if it involves fear, that is the thing that you are going to constantly be putting out and therefore there's going to be more of it, isn't there? How many of y'all have ever noticed like you you start, it's one thing after another. It's the, you know, something happened to the children at the narcissist's house. Now the narcissist is trying to do something with the kid's school or their medical uh, care. And then next thing you know, it's like the car breaks and this thing. And it's like all this stuff happens at once. That's not an accident. You know, there's no such thing as an accident. There's no such thing as coincidence. That's the energy that's the frequency that you are vibrating with. Your non-conscious mind is saying, this must be really important to you. You keep thinking about it all the time. Let me go find some more things for you that match that frequency. The problem here is that when it comes to shifting and, and moving out of that vibrational um, pattern, because um, imagine that frequency being like a piece of jello. Like you're in the jello. So that vibrational thing is actually freezing you on that frequency. If your life is constantly about fear, let's say your attorney bills are stacking up, your car payment is due, the rent is due, you just lost your job or your hours got cut. So now you're, I don't have enough money. I don't have a job. I don't have, I don't know how these bills are going to get paid. What is that all about? anxiety, fear, worry, a very low vibrational thing. That is going to be the state and you willing it. Oh, I wish I had more money. I need more money. I have to get more money. I got to get more money is not going to, that is, that is a fear-based response, which means it's still coming from the energy of, of fear. You understand? And so when we want to actually shift that vibrational, um, alignment that we have, we need to understand that coming from a place of fear, of working, of striving, of willing it, I'm going to muscle my way through it, is actually a fear-based response. And if you want to leave the jello, <laughs> if you want to leave that vibrational frequency, you are going to have to vibrate high enough that that jello actually falls off around you right? And that's, you're the fruit in this analogy. You want to actually shake that jello free of you. You want the jello to release you. You're not like fighting your way out of the jello and trying to like climb up out of a swimming pool full of jello. No, you're, you're shaking, you're releasing the jello from you, right? You change your standards and that jello stays where it stays at the frequency it's at. I want you to learn how to, um, shift your consciousness, which will naturally shift your energy level. Everything is vibrations. And I am talking about this in terms of science. I'm talking about at the quantum level, we know that everything is, first of all, most stuff, most solid things, this is still 99% empty space, right? At the quantum level. What does that mean? That means 
while this looks solid, I can touch it with my hands. I can feel it. I can hold it. I can touch my camera. I can touch my light. I can touch the computer with my hands. It feels solid. There's actually, when we get down into the molecule structure of these things, there's it's actually 99% empty space. That's the same with you, by the way. All of your cells are 99% empty, right? And by that, I just mean science has not been able to go down far enough to identify what the other 99% of things are. We can go down to the quantum level, but we don't know how to go past how to go past a quark, which is the smallest particle measurement unit that is available in quantum mechanics. There are other things, we just can't see them, right? We don't have the technology yet. Um, and so we don't know what that 99% empty space is. We just know that it's it looks empty. How could that be? It's it's solid because that is an excellent representation of how the spirit world interacts with the natural world that we are touching in the physical is actually spirit. That's the same with you, you know. You are a spirit. You have a soul. That's two thirds at least of your of your of who you are, invisible. <laughs> 